Kraft mac and cheese. If your parents don't buy it, stop loving them. Cut! Kraft singles are ideal on crackers or in a grilled cheese. You know the name, so let's go ahead and take a look at the top 10 untold truths of Kraft cheese. Kraft singles aren't made of real cheese. Fake, 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 fake. For many people, Kraft singles are a must-have. After all, nothing beats those slices that fill your sandwich and grilled cheese with savory goodness. Kraft singles, despite their flavor and look, aren't actually cheese. However, it is more accurate to call Kraft singles cheese food items. Real cheese is manufactured from milk, rennet, and salt. Kraft singles, on the other hand, contain a number of extra components that prevent them from being classified as such. This this cheesy wannabe contains milk, whey, milk protein concentrate, milk fat, and a plethora of other shady culprits such as sodium phosphate, sorbic acid, and paprika extract. When everything is combined, Kraft singles are only about 51% actual cheese. Though the list of ingredients isn't totally clear, Kraft singles surely are the most common brand of cheese on the market. J.L. Kraft founded the company in the early 20th century. Kraft's ingenuity was to melt down all of the worthless cheese chunks he had and combined them with a few additional components. As a result, single slices of American cheese were produced. And the rest was history. Though Kraft was the first one to do it, other manufacturers quickly followed suit, launching the pasteurized processed cheese food industry. It's perfectly legal to create cheese this way as long as the label clearly states that it's processed cheese and not the real thing. Regardless of its less than appealing root, Kraft Singles is still one of the simplest dairy products to slap on your sandwich when you're in need of an epic cheese pull. They were made to outlast normal cheese. Best before this date. After this date, not the best, but the still pretty good. Single-wrapped slices may appear to be nice and tidy. Kraft Singles, on the other hand, were made with the goal of never expiring. Ever, ever, never. People were eager to acquire them at first since they appeared to be ideal. Because they weren't actual cheese, the singles didn't curl. All the pieces were the same width and they didn't turn hard. After World War II, a lot of food manufacturing was industrialized and Kraft Singles became popular. People valued the fact that their cheese was produced in a factory. A high degree of quality was signified by the term standardized. We now have a clearer picture of the problem. We try to eat healthy, avoid processed foods, cleanse, and avoid things with lengthy ingredient labels. What's the healthiest recommendation? If you're eating something basic like cheese or fruit, the list of ingredients should just contain the one thing, the food. When you're hungry again, try a different cheese. That is, unless you don't mind using a cheese-like product from time to time. There's a cheese-scented nail polish. What the hell is that? Nail polish. Pinkies Out Polish, a cheese-scented nail polish by Velveeta, a Kraft Foods subsidiary, sold out on Nails Inc.'s website within hours of its release. Easy peasy. A $15 cheese-scented yellow and red nail polish duo in Finger Food and La Dolce Velveeta, as well as $4.99 La Dolce Velveeta nail stickers are included in the nail polish box. Velveeta's latest creative platform, La Dolce Velveeta, is all about people living in a bold, unabashed way to show the world that they're living a life of extreme pleasure. To promote the polish, Velveeta teamed up with 20 influencers that live the La Dolce Velveeta lifestyle, and the brand has been boosting their views through paid media. The main marketing assets for the campaign feature images of television star and personality Gia Gunn. Velveeta is also dabbling in public relations, collaborating with Allison Broad Marketing and Communications. In terms of strategy, the firm did not grant an exclusive to any media source, instead marketing the embargoed article to outlets specializing in food, beverage, and lifestyle. They gave a girl a cheese-related record deal. I will accept a record deal. The Kraft Heinz Company discovered Leela Andrews, a third-grade student at Norton Elementary School in Louisville, when she penned a charming song about her passion for mac and cheese and shared it on Twitter. Family, friends, and business executives surprised nine-year-old Leela at home with a new ukulele, bag, and a recording contract in a yard adorned with elbow noodles. Leela's Gigi, Gail Andrews, who traveled from 
Eastern Tennessee to cheer on her granddaughter, said Leela was always a performer. Leela's mother, Corey Andrews, claimed she and her husband were unaware of Leela's song until she was performing it and informed them that her music instructor tagged Kraft in a Twitter post, and Kraft reacted. I love it. It is simply awesome. Leela's parents were skeptical at first, but three months later, they were chauffeuring Leela to the studio to record her song. When asked what motivated her, she explained that she just loved mac and cheese. Corey and Adam Andrews say their daughter steals the show wherever she goes. Leela's parents claim she adores karaoke and is usually singing and dancing around the house. And she's, of course, quite fond of Kraft mac and cheese as well. As we keep moving on, take a second to hit that like button, would ya? Thank you. Next! Canadians love Kraft Mac and Cheese unlike any other country. Chuck is excited about moving to Canada, right, baby? Mm, that's cool. I love you. You would assume Kraft Macaroni and Cheese is popular in the United States, but Canadians take their box cheesy pasta far more seriously than Americans. They eat so much of it that Kraft Dinner, or KD as it's been known, has become the most popular grocery item in their country. Each Canadian consumes an average of 3.2 boxes boxes per year, or 55% more than Americans. Wow. Canadians also consume a large share of the planet's mac and cheese, amounting to 1.7 million of the 7 million cartons sold each week. And it's not just pride in their own country's goods. In a blind taste test, Canadians chose Kraft over other macaroni and cheeses four times out of four. They all seem to agree with the simple pleasures stashed inside that blue box of cheesy goodness. The Kraft mac and cheese powder can be used for so many foods. You have no idea. Why aren't you utilizing Kraft's proprietary cheese powder in other meals if you enjoy its distinct flavor? It's not only for mac and cheese anymore. We now have numerous more options for getting more cheese powder in our life. Instead of using salt or other ingredients to decorate the rims of your Bloody Mary cocktails, try out Kraft cheese powder. It has a salty edge to it, and it goes nicely with tomato and Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire? Now that sounds fancy. Dip the lip in some lemon juice beforehand to help the powder stick. Sprinkle the powder over buttered popcorn kernels and mix well to make quick, cheesy popcorn. To add a hint of creamy umami to your breakfast dish, mix some cheese powder in your eggs before scrambling. Anyone up for some homemade Doritos? Yes, that is an option. Simply sprinkle tortilla chips using cooking spray and toss with a mixture of Kraft cheese powder, paprika, and cayenne pepper before baking at 300 degrees for 10 minutes. Why should we stop there? Mix it with butter, throw it with fries, top baked potatoes or vegetables with it. The world is now your cheesy playground. Kraft Dinner has always been a budget food. It's cheaper. Kraft Macaroni and Cheese has been around since 1937, although the corporation did not create it at this time. Apparently, the earliest documented recipe dates back to 1769, but Kraft did patent the processed cheese that would alter the game for the business during the Great Depression. When Kraft learned about a salesperson selling pasta with a package of Kraft cheese affixed with a rubber band, they came up with the concept to package the pasta with the processed cheese as a quick meal. It's gonna be legendary. Legend? Wait for it. Dairy! From the start, the product always boasted an exceptionally long shelf life and no refrigeration necessary. Kraft started selling their prized jewel as Kraft Dinner, offering to serve a family of four for only 19 cents a box. The product rocketed off the shelves and sold 8 million boxes in its first year due to its affordability and capacity to feed a family. Because of the food restrictions put in place during World War II, the product maintained its appeal. For one rationing voucher, two boxes of Kraft Dinner could be purchased, scratching an itch as a replacement for unattainable dairy. In 1943, 80 million boxes were sold as a result of this. In 2018, Kraft Macaroni and Cheese remains a super affordable choice for a fast meal, with a price tag of under $1, which is a value considering standard inflation rates would have it costing more than $3 now. It contains some sketchy ingredients. Can anyone guess the secret ingredient? 
Because of the presence of phthalates in boxed mac and cheese, some consumers have sworn off Canada's favorite comfort meal. But what exactly is a phthalate, and should we be concerned? Phthalates are a category of compounds that may be found in a variety of products, including rubber, soap, and plastic. The chemicals are released into meals during the production process, and some research indicated that phthalates were present in 29 of 30 cheese products examined, with powdered cheeses carrying four times the quantity of natural cheese. Unacceptable! These chemicals are endocrine disruptors and may interfere with the synthesis or action of human hormones. They may lower fertility and raise the risk of certain disorders, such as endometriosis and cancer. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention claims the impact of low-level exposure on people is uncertain due to a lack of scientific research. However, specific phthalates have been banned in children's goods since 2008. So how does this affect our beloved macaroni and cheese? After the initial panic produced by the phthalate research, which resulted in frightening headlines advising us to give up our mac and cheese, it was determined that it's probably not as dangerous as it first appeared. Although it may sound alarming, the study found that the powdered cheese had a greater concentration of phthalates than real cheese, but not in contrast to anything else. As a result, we have no idea how much is too much. It would take quite a lot of mac and cheese to do any real harm. Craft singles aren't natural. Now describe what you taste. Cheese. When you first look at a Kraft cheese slice, it does appear to be cheese. When you look at the slice, however, you can tell that something isn't right because the color isn't quite right. Furthermore, all Kraft singles have a strange uniformity that is simply bizarre. It doesn't feel like cheese, doesn't taste like ordinary cheese, and most of the time doesn't act like regular cheese. What's worse, the Kraft Corporation is doing everything in their power and employing every trick in the book to convince you that this product does not make any form of misleading claim about being natural. At the same time, they employ all of the same deception techniques to make you believe that these same food items are all natural. In February 2014, Kraft started a campaign claiming that all artificial preservatives had been removed from each and every one of their cheese slices. But in reality, they had simply stopped using one preservative and replaced it with another natural preservative, namely natamycin. You won't be able to name the plant from which natamycin mycin is derived because it is not a natural component. No more lies! You poke the bear, girls! Furthermore, they altered the phrasing of their products from chemical preservatives to proprietary unknown substance, which might be anything from sand to gasoline or anything in between. Craft singles have some misleading labeling. Why would you do that? Unless you're trying to trick me somehow. Not only does Kraft market their cheese singles as real cheese, but they've also now been given the option of adding a special label to their package that reads, Kids Eat Right. What makes this situation even worse is that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics permitted it to happen. Why? While this may not appear to be a significant issue, it is since the new Kraft Cheese Singles label does not include any genuine cheese. The new labeling implies they are a healthy choice for children to enjoy. While you might speculate on why or how this occurred, bear in mind that the dairy business was a major financial contributor to the food pyramid, which recommended a minimum of four to six servings of dairy per day. Meanwhile, research has shown that eating too much dairy is harmful to your health and is not recommended. While you're free to draw your own conclusions, it is fascinating to learn that the folks who advise you what you should eat every day also own what they're encouraging you to consume. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Thanks for sticking around. We've got more videos just for you, so stay right here and check one out.